Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside the Pigskin. Yes, Inside the Pigskin. If you didn't figure it out already, we are talking football. And the name of the episode is The Washington What? You got it. Meanwhile, I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Opinion Rick Curdy. Welcome back to the broadcast, Rick. Thank you, Scott. Steve Ballesteri. Always a pleasure, my friend. And J.B. Ellis at the program. How's it going, guys? All right. And last but not least, Mel Farr Jr., the man that's going to carry the rock, among other things, tonight. Good evening, Mel. How's it going, everybody? All right. He's coming off his last stack. Where he was the MVP of the broadcast when him and I and Steve. <laughs> Steve, why don't you let everybody recap what Mel did to us on that last show here? <laughs> you got to go ahead and do that. Well, we, we, we were discussing a topic. And I was like, I I think I have a, an original take on this. And Mel beat us to the punch. And we were a day late and a dollar short. So It was just the order in which things happened. <laughs> I just got lucky. Take, take a bow, Mel. Take a bow. You, you beat I, us I, to the punch. I've never seen anybody, people so happy about having Baker Mayfield on your football team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mel, you definitely uh, earn MVP honors that night. So, you know, it's pretty hard to top that act. I know JB didn't see it, but that doesn't make any difference. Anyway, folks, just to let you know what we're going to be talking about tonight, the Washington football team slash Redkins recently rebranded their name. They are now the Washington Commanders. I want to go over a little bit of a background on the team per se. I'm going to list a bunch of names. Everybody get, get their two cents worth little history with the Washington Redskins. They own that name from 1937 to 2019. They went to the Washington football team from 2020 to 21, and they became the commanders in 2022. The team history goes back even further because you had the Boston Braves in 1932, and then the Boston Redskins from 1933 to 1936, where they played at Fenway Park. Well, I don't know if you were quite alive back then, Steve, but here's a little bit of Boston <laughs> trivia for you. Now, they've won five league championships, three Super Bowls, five conference championships, 15 division championships, 25 playoff appearances. If you ask them what you've done for me lately, don't bother, okay? And we won't even bother. But the whole idea is they did receive pressure in 2020 from the NFL and team sponsors that caused – uh, the Redskins to actually, uh, you know, rebrand the name in the wake of the George Floyd protest. And Daniel Snyder, who was adamant against removing the Redskins name, succumbed to the almighty dollar. But that said, okay, there's a little bit of a history of everything. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over 20 names and then the eight finalists and, uh, first. And then everybody's going to get a crack at this thing and with all the names that were considered. Now, and then I'll provide my final five, even though we know what the ultimate one turned out to be. Name number one was the Washington Senators, two Washington Federals, which actually somewhat made a little sense because they have the Capitals and the Nationals, the NHL and the MLB team, respectively. The Washington Braves, though, date back to their Boston days, but now it looks like they're trying to eliminate a lot of the Indian names uh, uh, A.K.A. the Atlanta Braves. And then you have the Washington Warriors, the Washington Red Hawks, same as Miami University, the Washington Skins, the Washington Renegades, the Washington Pigskins, the Washington Hogs, the Washington Armada, the Washington Brigade, the Washington Defenders, Washington presidents. Hope you guys are keeping up. Not you can always listen to the broadcast again, anyways. Okay. The Washington presidents, the Washington Red Tails, the Washington Rough Riders. Hello, Ottawa Rough Riders. We don't need one of those down here. The Washington Owls, the Washington Alliance, the Washington Revolution, the Washington Red Wolves, and the Washington Sentinels, which we we know that there's a little bit of a history with that name in the fictional world. So now, the one thing I can tell you before we go into everybody else, I didn't want the Washington Generals because they were the whipping boys of the Harlem Globetrotters. Not that the 
Washington football team, commanders, whatever you call them these days, aren't the whipping boys anyhow. And now they have Carson Wentz as a commander. Don't get me started on that. I, and then and then I'll go into the eight finalists, and then I'm going to be handing it over to each and every one of you to either comment on the ones you want or a reason why you didn't like what there is. The eight finalists of that group turned out to be the Armada, the Brigade, the Commanders, the Defenders, the Presidents, the Red Wolves, Red Hawks, and the Washington football team. Well, I guess there's probably no better person to lead off than the guy who's been waiting a couple weeks to go ahead and vent a little bit, Rick Curdy, Mr. Opinion. So take it away. Okay. Um, the only name on there, I hate them all. The, the only name on there that makes sense to me and that I've been advocating for is the Washington Hogs. I mean, why not name them after your 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 fan base dressed like pigs? You call them the Washington Hogs or the Ward Hogs. You can spell it H-A-W-G-S. Make it cool for the younger people. Call them the Washington Hogs. To me, that would have been the perfect name. Um, and the other ones, I mean, presidents. And, I mean, there was a Washington Center's baseball team. They already have Braves. Um, Commanders is the most idiotic name I've, ever, I've heard. It reminds, me, it reminds me of the old AAF team in San Antonio with the same name. So um, if Daniel Snyder hired a marketing team, I hope he's asking for a refund because I can't believe it took two years to come up with this hideous copycat name of the commanders. There's no imagination, no originality. Um, it has nothing to do with Washington slash Maryland where they really play. Um, I would have gone with the Washington Hogs, H-A-W-G-S, as the Washington Hogs. That would have been the name I would have given them. Now we have some feedback in the chat room from Sal Tartaglia, and he was talking about uh, USFL team, the general. So Sal was reaching out to us and thank you very much Sal, for tuning into the broadcast. So, all right, Rick, you're telling me the Washington Hogs, right? The Hogs, H-A-W-G-S. Uh, I don't know, Steve Ballesteri. <laughs> now, I wasn't a fan of the Hogs. Um, it, you know, I thought the Sentinels would have been a great name because, hey, then they could have brought in Shane Falco, you know. But, um, <laughs> I know, honestly, the Commanders, I thought, was horrible. It has you know total lack of i guess uh pizzazz and uh you know when you when you looked at the eight finalists the the only names that i liked <clears throat> was the red wolves i because they wanted to keep the same color uh scheme going so that kind of made sense but to me and, and it, they weren't really burgundy they were bright red was the red tails and being a military, you know, veteran and, and a military history buff, the Red Tails are an awesome story. And, you know, unfortunately, the fan that sent in that logo for that put a plane look like a Cessna instead of a P-51 Mustang. But for those of you who don't know, the Red Tails were originally from the Tuskegee Airmen. And at the time... The military didn't want to let African-Americans fly combat planes in World War II because they didn't think they would be able to handle it. And they ended up, uh, you know, uh, creating this group. They were kind of crapped on by the military and given, like, the worst equipment, the, the worst places to be stationed at. And they finally, you know, earned their, their wings, so to speak. They got P-51 Mustangs. They turned out to be a tremendous, you know, uh, squadron who uh, flew, you know, B-17 bombers to Germany and back. And Benjamin O. Davis was the commander. I mean, you, you're talking about history. Center of our country is in Washington. I thought the Red Tails would have been a perfect name. And it, it got away from the Native American stuff that they were trying to avoid. Well, you know, I got news for you. I knew that there was a military thing coming your way. And therefore, the hand of the day, even though there's a Branson twist to it, there's a military camouflage look to it. So for a lot of you folks that are watching on Facebook Live and you're looking at my hat, there's a little bit of military camouflage, albeit this thing is from Branson. It doesn't matter where it's from. It's the camouflage and the military aspect. So you know what, Steve? 
what I'd like you to do, and South of Tor uh, Tartaglia had some other comments I'd like to mention, too, that the owner was vying for the Snyders, but if they win, it won't matter. So I encourage everybody out there watching and listening, please provide feedback, and I'll do everything I can to read everything on, because that way it gives everybody an opportunity to feed off of what you're doing. And, and actually, Sal goes on and says they were actually medically used as a testing samples, but yet they flew the aircraft without fault so with that said steve i know i normally do this for later in the show but since we're talking a little bit of military and then i'll move on to the rest of the crew i want everybody out there steve ahead of time to uh let them know what you write for militarily since there's a nice correlation yeah i i uh, am a national security columnist for 1945.com uh you know we cover politics um uh, you know, military affairs right now, of course, the last 35, 36 days, I've been writing nonstop about Ukraine. I also write for Sofex, a special operations uh, newsletter, uh, and I, I do some writing for them as well. So and eventually we're going to uh, branch out and start doing some podcasts. But, you know, uh, I'm a retired military officer, so. That's where all that comes from. But I also, you know, write about football as well. So it, it sometimes the two worlds blend together. So, Steve, in your estimation, based on what you just told us, did you really, really want to see the Washington football team? I mean, basically, the Washington football team have a military name to it. Well, it wasn't so much it was a, as a military name. It, it was just... It was honoring, you know, some people who, who fought for our country. And you know, that was their nickname because when uh, the squadron went to Italy, uh, they were looking for something to put on their aircraft to make them distinctive. And so then one of the pilots decided, hey, let's paint our entire tail of the aircraft red, bright red. And that's where that name came from. Because the first mission that they flew, they protected a bunch of B-17 bombers. And there was a mix-up and with the uh, communication systems. And neither uh, could talk to each other because they were on different radio frequencies. But when the, when the bombers returned to their air base, they were like, we don't know who those guys were, but those red tails saved our butts. And that's where the name came from. And so I, I was all for red tails and that's just me, but I, I hate the commanders and that, that's really a military connotation as well. I just think that one just lacks any kind of imagination. Well, I'm just glad you gave us a good history behind the red tails. There are a lot of folks out there that are interested. And so thank you very much for doing that. Okay, JB. Okay. Now, if I see you correctly, are you wearing a Jacksonville Jaguars jersey? Yep. This is the Jaguars I got on tonight. Um, and seriously, the Commanders, no imagination. I mean, I, I'm a St. John's Red Storm fan, so I go way back. We changed our name years ago. We were the Red Men. We became the Red Storm. Not a fan of name changes. I get, you know, with the political climate, why it's done. I don't like it. Uh, I like teams to keep their names. I'm an old school person when it comes to things like that. But they played two years under the Washington football team, and they, they came up with the commanders. It just seems like it lacked imagination. i, I got to go with Steve. I think the, the Red Tails was probably the, the best name. And then I think Rich had the second best name because it would have honored, you know, what Washington was known for as I was growing up was their offensive line, the hog. So, you know, either one of those names it would have been all in and it would have sounded great, but – Everything Daniel Snyder has been involved with since he's owned that team has been something not even to pay attention to. Because every time you pay attention, people tend to lose their jobs. Look at John Gruden. You know, they've got scandals. They've got RG3, whose book got canceled. Looked at what, what was done with that. Why, you know, him and Gary aren't going to publish that book, which we're going to have a lot of information on the inside of the organization. So there's just a lot of parts there that just, it's a toxic organization. And coming up with a bad name, not surprising with them. Very interesting. Okay, Mel, what do you think? 
yeah, I'm kind of like everybody else, especially like JB. I'm not really a fan of name changes, but I understand why they had to do it. And you ask who was who was in charge or what focus group that they, they went to 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 consult with this name change. It was probably the same folks that they consulted with, with when they did the Rams, when they changed the logo for the Rams, which I don't know why they, they did that. But I would have probably gone like what Steve said with the red tails, uh, the red the red dogs was the red hogs rather was also interesting, but you know, I know that goes back in time to, you know, some of the days where, you know, when Washington was pretty dominant there in the NFC East, uh, but it takes out, it does, it does leave out a lot of the history of the, of the franchise, but if they were going to do something and wanted to be politically correct, which we know the NFL is not very much so concerned about that. The red tails would have been a nice, would, would have been very, very nice. I'm not a real fan of the commanders. When it came out, I was like, uh, kind of the same way I felt when the Rams came out with their new logo. It was just like, uh, I mean, who do they, who do they talk to? I mean, this is disgusting. It looked like a kid came up with this and pretty much the same way I feel about the commanders, if, if, you know, anybody, I mean, that that's real simple. I mean, you got the commander in chief right there in Washington. I mean, that was, so I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the, of the new name. Okay. All right, I've got some strong opinions on this, and then I want you guys, if you're interested, to feed off of what I've got to say, okay? Like Rick Curdy, I've been thinking about it for a while. That's why I came up with the idea in the first place, because I think it's one that, you know, has to be addressed, and I'm glad tonight is the opportunity to do it. First of all, I didn't think that they should have changed the Washington Redskins in the first place. And I'll tell you why I say that, because for all these years, okay, dating back to 1937, to 2019 it wasn't a big deal to begin with okay but all of a sudden it became a big deal really i mean could we have changed this thing in the year 2000 2005 but no it took 2019 to do it okay so i don't like changing anything because of tradition and history to begin with like jb said right nobody likes to change the names if you can conceivably avoid it but why did it take this long to 2019 when the Washington Redskins were a brand in the area? Nobody appeared to be offensed by it. But then all of a sudden, yeah, you know, we got corporate sponsors. We got the NFL. You need to change it. And, you know, I agree that Dan Snyder has done a poor job running that organization. He couldn't even get Joe Gibbs to save him the second time around. And he was an iconic coach there. But he tried to keep. The name, and if we really want to pick on Dan Snyder a little bit more, why don't we just say once upon a time, the guy tried to charge his fan base to show up at training camp as well. We all know how that worked out. That didn't work out very well at all. So, you know, and then, of course, that would be one of the many things he would do to alienate the fan, fan base. But I don't think the Redskins should have gone in the first place. I really don't. So well, you know, I, to piggyback off that – um I don't know if you guys know who Kerry Byrne is. He used to run cold, hard football facts, but uh, he also writes for the Boston Herald. He wrote a really interesting historical piece on that. And the original face that, you know, that was the logo for the team was actually an uh, Indian from the Lanai Lenape tribe called Tammany. And he, uh, there was a bust made of him in Tammany Hall in New York City. He was called the patron of America. George Washington and Valley Forge said on Tammany Day, the troops celebrated this patron saint. So when they came up with this logo for the team, at that time, the NFL was just starting. And NFL teams usually played in the same location that their baseball stadium was located at. Mm -hmm. So when the Boston Braves were there, they used the, the Tammany face and it was, that was the Boston Braves, but then the Boston Braves had to move out of Braves field and they went to Fenway. So they had to keep some kind of a name. So instead of, well, they couldn't call them the red Braves. So they went with red skins, but, um, uh, if you, if you ever get a chance, look that up because uh, it was not a racist connotation 
whatsoever. They were honoring this guy. I mean, who's like I said, they they have a bust of him in New York City in Tammany Hall, and the guy who create who bought and started the Boston Braves was one of those Tammany Hall politicians. Hey, sorry to interrupt, Scott. Um, just this just came out a couple of minutes ago. Peter King tweeted that uh, Bruce Arians is moving into the front office, and Todd Bowles is going to take over the job to replace him in Tampa. Just wow. tweeted it about six minutes ago, so I think it just lets everybody know. So we got some breaking news. Very good, Jamie. Thank you very much. Appreciate wow, it. that's right. that's that's breaking it, news. It, you Thank heard those stories about Brady and Aries not getting along, so maybe they were true. Thank you, Jamie. Well, I'm glad. I'm thinking. glad to see Todd Bowles get another shot. We talked about it. Yeah, we here a couple of weeks ago, but you know, because he got a raw deal with the Jets, and now he has a really good football team. I'm actually excited to see how he does as a head coach now with well, the real football team behind him. Well, I think we predicted that either Todd Bowles or Byron left, which would be the heir apparent to Bruce Arians. So thank you very much, JB, for breaking that news. We appreciate it. You know, so we were really on target with that. So, you know, so there you go. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a brand new coach, and that's Todd Bowles. And if you're going to do everything through the offseason, you might as well add another one to it as well. All right, now uh, going back to what we talked about, okay, and I don't want to get too far off base with the Indian names, but you still have the Atlanta Braves intact. The Chicago Blackhawks are still out there, and the Florida State Seminoles. So there are some Indian Kansas names. Kansas City Chiefs. Them too. Oh, yeah. So the Tomahawk job. <laughs> you're right. So yeah, we've got these Indian names out there, but yet the Redskins are being singled out. And, again, I re preface my point that it took until 2019 until they finally had to do it and well, succumb to pressure. Well, here let's, let's go back because it was actually 2020 when they made that change and it was in the summer of 2020. And you have to think of what the social climate was at that particular time. George Floyd was, was right. murdered in May of 2020. And so there was a different social conscious at that particular time. You, people started understanding, especially, uh, you know, they started understanding what what Colin Kaepernick was talking about. Then uh, FedEx FedEx decided that they want uh, that they didn't want to be a part of the Redskins anymore. I think the guy uh, who who was part owner, uh, one of the Redskin owners, who, part who was with FedEx, either they were discontinuing their their sponsorship or uh, he was no longer going to be an owner. I can't remember what what exactly it was because uh, you know b- because of that social pressure that he felt uh, with, with Daniel Snyder not wanting to uh, change the name because they've been talking about this for a long time. And Daniel Snyder said he was never going to do it. Right. And so, you know, history is always written by the winners and you know, who, you know, we're, we're saying, or you're saying, you know, how is that offensive? Well, none of us are native American and we can't say what's offensive. It's not for me to say, that that's not offensive to a native American person, that that name is not offensive to a native American. It's not for me to say that no differently than it is for a white person to say, calling me the N word is not offensive. So I I don't know, you know, they said it was offensive. I take them at their word. It was something that needed to be done, but it, it, you know, still, you know, I do like, I do like, I'm, you know, the, the history of the game. I do like the history, uh, of that team associated with that name, but I understand why it needed to be changed and, and I'm okay with it. I just don't particularly care for the name that they decided to change it to. So it's not for us to really to say that they should, they shouldn't have changed it or, or, or because it wasn't offensive. None of us are native American. We don't know exactly what went behind the name. Now, you know, Steve tells a great story, but if nowadays, you know, these kids are different now. Uh, people are different now than they were uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, you know, 30 years ago. People are different and you know, the kids are speaking up and they won't take certain things. They won't tolerate certain things that have just been status quo over the years. They say, no, that's wrong. I mean, you look at the protests that were going on after George Floyd was murdered. Right. You know, people are just saying, no, that that's not right. And it wasn't just black folks out there saying it was all kind of folks out there just saying that, hey, that is not right. And so now you have people standing up saying, hey, 
you know, we stand with the Native Americans. That's that's not right. If they don't like it, you need to change your name. And so, yeah, he, he succumbed to pressure. There's no question about it. But he really succumbed to the dollar. You know, because folks started started pulling away their sponsorships because they did not want to be associated with that name. Well, your points are well taken, and I'll tell you why they're well taken in a couple areas. Number one, yes, the George Floyd thing played a large part of it. And number two, I'm glad you brought up Colin Kaepernick because in Colin, and we're not devoting a whole show to him, but, you know, here's a guy that was ahead of his time with what he was doing. So I understood why he doesn't have a job with the quarterback climate as pathetic as it is is another story. The only thing that I can relate to is that maybe they feel that the publicity is something they, they don't want to deal with and owners don't want to be bothered with all that. But, again, I'm not speculating on Kaepernick. But I understand that the George Floyd and the monetary value certainly factored into all this. So, I want to go over five other names that I myself highlighted as possibilities. Number one, Rick Curdio liked this one. All right. I would have loved to have seen the Washington senators come back. I really would have. And the reason why is you had the baseball team on two occasions and why not bring them? They would have fit in with the current capitals and nationals and let's bring it back. They were always the senators why not? But again, we knew that was there was potentially that was a long shot, but why not? The second one I was intrigued about would have been the Washington Warriors. W's are wild, folks. Washington Warriors. You still have the Golden State Warriors. Why not have the Washington Warriors? Okay. The other one that I had was, yes, the Washington Red Tails. I have no problem. Steve Ballesteri, as if I wasn't convinced to go with it before, Oh, when you, before you brought out your story, anything with the word red in it would have been all right with me. No, uh, the Red Hawks would have been fine because, again, you talk about red skin, but you, whether it's Red Hawk, Red Tail, whatever. And, of course, Red Wolves was another intriguing one out there as well that was being bannered around. So, you know, let's face the reality. We knew Redskins was going to ultimately go away, but why not keep red into the equation at some point? I don't know if I would have been drinking the Washington Hogs Kool-Aid, Rick. Sorry about that. I'd find it hard to believe that a team could be named after a hog. You know, I realized that you were a Cleveland Spiders guy, so you'd love to have a spider. And for a lot of you spider watchers, okay. And I don't talk about my movie uh, history because it isn't very good. But once upon a time when I went to that movie, Arachnophobia, whatever it was called, <laughs> I lasted all of five minutes with my girlfriend. I said, Diane, if you want to watch it, fine. I'm getting the heck out of air. Probably paid like $10 for the show. Had my popcorn and told her, I'm going into the car if you want to watch it. I am not watching Arachnophobia, and I wouldn't call any team spiders. And I'll be darned if I was going to call them hogs. Now, I said a mouthful, Steve Ballesteri. What do you think about some of the old red alternatives outside of the Redskins? Oh, you know, the, the guys who used to dress up with the hog noses? They were all like big executives for, there was like, um, uh, they were military like um, contractors that build stuff for the Navy and the Air Force. Those guys were, they weren't like regular, you know, lunch pail guys. They were all big execs. I remember uh, reading about them back in the time. But I, I thought Hogs was too, it, it just narrowed the focus to just that that error of the football team. So I didn't think that would work. And I, uh, I think a, a lot of young fans today probably don't even know who the Hogs were. You know, Joe Jacoby, Russ Grimm, all those guys. Yeah, Washington Revolution would have been interesting because we're talking about the Revolutionary War. And yes, I do believe I'm a history buff there. And another one that would have intrigued me a little bit would have been the Renegades. Because for all, uh, since I'm a front guy from the Metro Detroit area, uh, there's a vehicle called the Jeep Renegade, and they're tough. So if you want to call a football team tough against a Renegade, I might have gone along with that. But no, I'm going to tell you one thing I did hate, and I think all of us could agree on that, but I understand why they did it temporarily. Washington football team. Oh my goodness, that was awful. I mean, what do they have? Uh, I'm not a big soccer guy, JB, but maybe you might be able to help me out a little bit. Don't they call these soccer teams in MLS? Is it football team, soccer club? They don't have real names or what? Give me a help. Me out they have all sorts of weird names in soccer, the football club, you 
know, with the, all sorts of odd things. I, I'm not a huge soccer guy either. But, you know, going back to Mel's point before with succumbing to the pressure, I don't even know if it was so much succumbing to the pressure as far as there were so many bad things going on in the organization between the cheerleader scandal, the emails, that changing the name gave, some, gave everyone something else to talk about. That it was like, all right, how can I get the, you know, everyone to stop looking at me? I'm going to give some the people something to look at. We're going to change the name, and you know, they'll they'll talk about that. They'll, they'll say I'm a great guy because I said this name's no good, you know. So that, that's why I think he did it. Obviously, it's always money, but I, I think it was him saving his butt trying to figure out how he could get turn something to a positive PR thing, and, and he messed that up. <laughs> Daniel Snyder. I, I agree with Scott. I think it's ridiculous that the NFL, after 40 years, are so offended by this name. I never was a fan of the name. I'm kind of glad they changed it. It's just a stupid name that they came up with. Um, but I agree. I think the NFL, I mean, they had no problem with this name for like over 40 years. And then one day, we got to change it. It is so offensive and so disgusting. We want nothing to do with it. But they didn't have a problem with it for 40 years. So that's my problem with it. And I think our, 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 um, society today and i agree with mel it's changed but it's just changed way too much i think it's just so overly sensitive now i mean we at a time that that some uh, baby it's cold outside was uh young people were offended because they said it was a rape song so i mean it, it's gotten so ridiculous our society mm -hmm. i mean even if they did change um, i wouldn't be surprised in 20 years someone says you know that name commanders i'm offended by that name let's change something else everything is so offensive today and it's I'm, I, I, and uh, I agree. I mean, I think everyone just said, you know what, things are changed. Let's get rid of the name, but it's a stupid name. And they're not even in Washington. They're in Maryland for Pete's sake. So um, I still like the Hawks, but I like Steve's as well. I think anyone would have been fine with it, but commanders, I mean, is, 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 is so blah, so generic, so dumb. And it has really nothing to do with uh, Washington, DC. So Steve, what yeah, do you but, I mean, FedEx feels is, yeah, stones throw from DC. So yeah, I mean, I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, just like the Giants and the Jets, uh, they play actually in New Jersey. But yeah, I mean, it's still a stone's throw from. I mean, you can see the skyline of New York from, you know, from the football stadium. And now he wants a new stadium. He wants to move it to Virginia. Yeah, yeah. So. And now he wants to go to Virginia, which is. <laughs> but so again, Steve, where where he wants to build it isn't far from. DC. Yeah. So Steve. Tell me about defenders. I'm a little curious about that. Does anybody in the NFL uh, have defenders at all with the everything being so emphasized of the passing game? Just kidding with you a little bit because I'm satirizing the existing climate that the word defense is becoming uh, extinct. But let's kick around the defenders. But before you do that, uh, all I can say is if it took two years to come up with a general name, the commanders. If you're going to come up with the commanders, you should have done it within six months, not wait two years to come up with that name. I understand that they were trying to play it conservative and safe, and they weren't going to go ahead and you know they didn't uh, want to offend anybody. So right, yeah. well, I'm it's offended. I'm offended by that name. name <laughs> but it took you two years to come up with the commanders. You could have done that a whole lot sooner and sold a whole lot of merchandise before that. You know, so I don't know if you really felt it. I mean, I, again, I realize that there's trademark infringements about who's what's available. And, you know, having a trademark, the Motor City Madmouth folks, it happens to be trademarked. I've made a little bit of money for it. I'm glad I did. But, you know, I understand trademark infringements being what they are. But if it took you two years to come up with the commander, you could have done that six months ago. You didn't need two years with a gaudy name Washington football team out there as your temporary Band-Aid on top of an insane sore. All right, getting back to my point, Steve, now that I've mentioned it, is anybody in the modern NFL to be a defender? Um, I don't really care for that name either. Honestly. Yeah, no. I, I laugh because it's like de defense. They have defense, so... Uh, that but, that was kind of like a like you a know laugh, the, a the laugh other again. name that you mentioned, Scott, was Washington Revolution, which I thought would be, you know, that would be a little bit catchy. I mean, there, it it shouldn't offend anyone. Uh, they have a soccer team <laughs> named that in New England, the New England Revolution. I mean, what are you going to call? What what's their nickname going to be? Are they going to be the Commies? Hey, go Commies! I mean, <laughs> really? Well, that, that's what people denigrating the. 
the team are going to call them. Obviously. Yeah, they're going to call them the commies. I mean, it's, right. I mean. <laughs> well, here, you know, JB and all you guys, I'm going to throw another little uh, thing at all of you. Okay, once upon a time, it seemed like every name ended with an S. But in this day and age, you have a lot of nicknames that don't even have an S on the back of them. Mel, what are your thoughts about that? And I'm going to let everybody give me their opinion about nicknames that don't end in S. You said there was a lot of nicknames that ended with S? Yeah, and now you have a lot of them nowadays that don't end with S. You, you, went back, you ought to have one in your backyard, I believe, called the Atlanta Dream. Is that correct? And oh, that, yeah, that, that's one, but I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. Right. So for I'm talking the dream about, versus the dreams. Yeah. Right. But I'm talking about a lot of names nowadays don't even end with an S. That they have a, uh, they end with anything but an S. But I think of the Miami S. Heat. I think well, that right away. Oh, don't worry. We're not going to do a show about uh, uh, names say, that don't end with an S. You got, a, you got a lot of time on your hands. I never heats, thought about that. The Miami Heat doesn't sound good. What's that? I said you got a lot of time on your hands. I never thought. I never even w would even think about that. I never even thought about that. I'm a journalist. Uh, teams that have S's and the teams that don't have S's. I, I never even thought about it. <clears throat> but you know, Rick. Rick just brought up the Miami Heat. That's a, you know, but it, you know, I, you know, I, I've never thought about it. <laughs> well, you know what, uh, TBD, folks. Maybe we'll do another show. JB, you're definitely going to be on that one. So. Uh, if we get really intrigued about some of the ones that don't have S's, we'll do it. But for the sake of keeping on point here, okay, with the Washington situation, I want to make sure we keep it in that direction. Mel, I mean, what are your thoughts about the way this whole rebranding is taking place with Washington? Uh, you know, it was something that was going to have to be done because he was getting an immense amount of pressure um, over time over the last number of years since he really took over, took over ownership. And I think the more he resisted, the more, the more pressure there was. And then again, like I talked about, you know, once that George Floyd, once that all, all that happened and people started really seeing things through a different lens and were a little bit more compassionate at that particular time. Um, I'm not, you know, like, again, like I said, I'm not a real fan of the name. I, I do like, the team, I think they should have just left it the football team. That had actually started kind of growing on me, to be honest with you. But um, if they were going to change it, they, I think something, I think red should have been involved in it. Red something should have been should have been a part of it. JB, bad move. I mean, listen, I there's nothing about me that likes this. There's nothing. I thought the football team was bad enough. We've had the name Redskins for so many years. Let's have a temporary name. Why don't we just come up with the name first before we change the name? That would have been good enough. Why don't we going to call ourselves the football team? It just doesn't make sense. The, the whole thing was done horrible. Steve? Yeah, I agree with, with JB there. I mean, if, if you decided you're going to change it, then make a change. And don't, you know, play it out for two years and then come up with something horrible. Yeah. I mean, you're you're supposed to be a smart guy, a billionaire owner, and you're supposed to surround yourself with smart people. Come up with a good name. Commanders, to me, is lame. That was just lame. All right, Mr. Opinion. Well, I mean, it's just I, I just never understood Washington football team. I just thought so, like. I mean, come up with a name. I mean, it's like saying a uh, guy with glasses wearing a green shirt. You know, is that going to be my name? Hey, I'm going to come up with a new name, but let's call myself guy with a green shirt, okay? That's stupid. So you should have come up with a name. You you have your billionaire. could have come up with some marketing campaign. You could have done a, a fan contest and say this is the number one, the winner. We're all the fans. But it's Daniel Snyder. What do you expect? He's one of the most incompetent owners in all of sports. He's a joke. You know, there's all these scandals swirling around him. Any other owner? I mean, Jerry Richardson, I mean, he was booted off by the Panthers, by the NFL, because of um, sexual misconduct and all this stuff. And he was booted out right away, and yet Daniel Sanders still there. So, I mean, the, I think the NFL, is, you know, shows how hypocritical they are. And this name is just another uh, uh, another oof by, the, uh, by uh, Daniel Snyder and the NFL. It's just a stupid boring, generic, dumb name. I think the only thing that makes any sense about what Washington has done to uphold to the tradition of the franchise is at least they did not change the color scheme. Okay. At least they kept 
the burgundy and the yellow. So, Mel, you know, it doesn't seem like anything looks good for the commanders, but at least the color scheme. What do you think? Yeah, I like the color scheme. And I don't, I don't like when teams mess around with their color schemes, to be honest with you. You look at some of the, the great franchises that we have in, in this league, and they don't really mess with their color schemes. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they don't really – they don't mess with it. Even the Cleveland Browns. I mean, you know, we, we know – Kansas City Chiefs. Um, there's just some teams that just don't mess with the color scheme. Some of these newer teams, they always want to change it. You know, Seattle Seahawks went from their colors to the colors they are now. Tampa Bay. I like the cream sickles. I love the cream sickle uniform. I, I had a, a cream sickle jersey, and now they change it to that pewter and whatever whatever color it is. Yeah. You know, New England. They change their uniform. I like their old uniforms. I like yeah. it with the little Patriot guy with the helmet. You know, in the stance, whatever with the helmet. I like it. The Raiders. They don't change their their uniform. There is something about tradition that I that I really appreciate. And you know, I don't I don't like messing with the uniforms, colors, mm-hmm. color schemes. None of it. I just like. I, I'm just I'm just old fashioned like that. Now some teams have you know upgraded for the better. Uh, the Lions have not. I don't like their new uniforms. I don't like that little italicized numbers. I don't like that. The Chargers they've they've upgraded for the better. The Dolphins I love that color scheme. You know they pretty much have stayed the same. Cowboys you know they've teetered with it a little bit, but pretty much have stayed the same. Well, at least with these Detroit Lions, they're always going to be the Honolulu blue and silver, no matter what they really tinker with it. It's not like they made a drastic change to a different one, albeit they've changed a little bit. But I think there's more far drastic changes than that. But I understand your point for sure. All right, JB, what about you? What about the color scheme there? I mean, I I like tradition. I'm a, like I said earlier, I like things to stay the same. You see, like the Atlanta Falcons, they came out with the new uniforms last year, the Rams, as Mel was saying earlier. You know, you have nice uniforms. Why are you changing what you have? I, I understand people are going to go out and buy the new one because it's the, the latest, greatest new thing. But it doesn't look good. If, if you're going to do it, at least make it look good. The Chargers, like you said, their uniforms have gotten better. But that doesn't happen very often. And I, I agree. you got to keep the colors. Sal Tartiglia also mentioned that the Eagles are bringing back the Kelly Green as the alternates uh, beginning in 2023. Before we go on to somebody else, I just want to let everybody know that uh, Inside the Pigskin can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, and or wherever you get your podcast. You can also find it on the YouTube channel as well, www.southfloridatribune.com. Just want to get that out there early, and we'll do it again as a reminder. Steve, some color schemes. I was livid when the Patriots changed their their uniforms. I thought their away uniform, the white jersey with the red pants and the old Pat the Patriot helmet, that was the sharpest looking uniform, and it, it, it matched up beautifully, you know, against a green field. And you're playing a team in their darks, it just matches up perfectly. I honestly, I hate the flying Elvis logo. Because that's what that is, that Patriot logo. That's Elvis. The guy who who won the contest, he drew Elvis Presley with a tri-corner hat. And I, I hate that all blue thing that they wear right now. I think they're ugly. I wish they would go back to the old uniforms. The, that was, you know, it was original. It was classic. It just looked good. I, I remember, um, you know, uh, going to a game with the Raiders and watching the Raiders and the Patriots play, and you have two teams that the uniforms just look so good going against each other, against a green football field. You know, I can't stand when teams change their colors, and I, I was livid when the Patriots changed theirs. Uh, I, I Every year when they talk about, oh, the color scheme of this, I always suggest they go back to the original I thought that was a really sharp looking uniform and all these, a lot of these teams that changed, they all kind of look the same. It's kind of cookie cutter now, you know? Well, well, you know, before we get to Rick Curdy, you brought up Elvis Presley. So while I have an attentive audience here, I have a great uh, story about Elvis Presley. Okay. One of my all time favorite writers used to be for the Detroit free press and the Detroit news uh, the late Joe Falls, who, by the way, is in the Hall of Fame, Baseball Hall of Fame as a writer. 
and I was very close to Joe. And I think Mel, you probably heard of Joe Falls, haven't you? Sure. So have. if anybody can relate to him, so I used to travel with the Lions uh, years ago, covering their road games and home games. And Joe and I were very close. So when we talk about cookie cutter stadiums. I had a chance. I was always sitting next to Joe whenever uh, they would put me there in the press box. So what's interesting about the whole th thing is I told Joe that, you know, I had a gut feeling that my sources would tell me that Elvis Gerback is going to be picked up by the uh, Detroit Lions because he played for the University of Michigan. So now Joe gives me this incredible look, said, Scotty, and I'm saying Scotty because if people like me, they call me Scotty. Okay. And Joe and I had an unbelievable relationship. He's like a father figure in me. Every time I needed somebody to turn to, Joe said, you call me anytime you want. I'm always here for you, buddy. And I, I can get into a history later on down the road. In fact, I will go a little further. When I, when I was going through a divorce first time, he once gave me fatherly advice. Okay. Thankfully, I've only been my second last time. Uh, but uh, he, he said, if you, as long as you give it your best shot the first time, you got nothing to worry about. He got married the second time. The rest is history. But getting back to my uh, story here, that I have a feeling that the Atlanta Falcons are going to draft Elvis Gerback. He said, really? I need to know where your sources are about this one. And he got his hand right on top of my shoulder, right in the box at Three Rivers Stadium. Okay. I said, well, Joe, if you don't tell nobody else, here's the deal. Once upon a time, okay, Jerry Glanville left tickets uh, for Elvis <laughs> to show up at his stadium. So I have a feeling since he couldn't get Elvis Presley, he was going to draft Elvis, Ger Elvis Gerback. <laughs> and you know what? Joe laughed so hard. He said, Scotty, at a time when I needed a lighthearted moment, my friend, you delivered it. That was awesome. He gave me a hug. And like I said, we were always uh, uh, great friends. But he loved that one-liner. And it's safe to say he didn't draft all the star back, couldn't give away his tickets to Elvis Presley. And that's that story. South to Triglia. We love your participation. And he keeps telling a guy by the name of Mark Mancini that the Steelers need to put a logo on both sides of their helmets. And maybe I can convince Mark. Don't worry, uh, Sal. I'll be giving Mark an earful uh, probably in a few days. And just to let you know, South Tartiglia is a guy that I work with as well on other shows. And let me throw a little sneak preview out there. I know Rick's heard of them that Mark Mancini and I are in the process of possibly launching a show, but we have, uh, some things have to get worked out. They'll fire up Florida. So we'll keep you posted when that goes out there as well. But, you know, again, uh, he, uh, these guys like to uh, join in on our shows and Rick and I had another one of Mark's guys, Lou uh, Landers, who does a great job on the football show. And you know, what's so beautiful about this platform is when you have a chance to deal with John Shear, Jake Malik, Eric Wilson, that leads to J.B. Ellis, who happened to be sitting in here. And the only difference between J.B. and the rest of them is J.B. gets to put up with us once a week. And we in <laughs> football, we're going to just talk his ear off. And J.B. will be a co-host eventually on The Real and the Rare, which is a non-sports related thing. So when you talk about being able to meet different people across different platforms, it's great to be able to incorporate them where – uh, we can. And more importantly, the one thing that's important that we do out here is that we're all friends that we love doing what we do. And that's why these crews are phenomenal. So if I haven't said a mouthful, I always do anyways. But we got a couple of minutes left in the broadcast. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to let Rick Curdy give me some closing thoughts about the Washington. What? <laughs> yeah, stupid name. I think we all agree. I think like everyone I know hates the name. I've not had not one person say, oh, God, I love that name. It's so it's, it's a stupid name. The AF had the San Antonio Commanders, you know, so I just thought of them right away. Um, I mean, they're a mess. I mean, it's obviously a mess. Daniel Snyder is a horrific owner. Uh, he must got something on the rest of the owners there because any other owner would have been booted out. Um, like I said, Jerry Richardson was booted out for sexual misconduct right away. Got took a statue away, and but you still got Daniel Snyder. So um, doesn't surprise me. He came up with a stupid name. I thought Washington Football Team was another scratch my head moment. I don't get it. Um, I, I I think the name should have been changed. That's my opinion. But something would have been a lot better. Base it base it up with the fans, the team, the franchise, DC, something. But Commanders is a big thumbs down for me. 
Um, but I'm I'm glad they kept the colors. I like it. They the they tweak the uniforms. I kind of they kind of look a little sharper. Um, so I'll give them that. But the name a big uh, uh, Gong Show. Uh, anyone remembers the Gong Show? I would Gong that name. It's it's a dud. All right. So what I'm going to do now, thanks, Rick, is everybody gets a chance one more time in case somebody's joining us now. Give me your final answer, Regis Philbin style, about what the name should have been. Everybody gets a final answer before we call it a night. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, I'm sticking with the Washington Hogs. It's got tradition. It it, it has to do with the name, the fan base, um, and you know, just because you can just call them the Hogs, H A W G S, for the younger people, make it more hipper. Um, Warthogs, I'd have been okay with. All right, um, no, 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 don't give me okay. your Mount Rush Hogs. Hogs. Nine million people. Just give me one <laughs> name. Hogs. JB will never make his meeting if you go out there and give uh, nine million uh, words, man. So Washington Hogs. All right, Steve, give us your Regis Philbin version of the final answer about what they should have been. Uh, you know what my answer is, Red Tails. Okay, uh, Mel. You know, you you can ask. You know, this is going to be divisive, just like anything else. It's like the political climate. I mean, fifty percent of people are going to like whatever name they came up with, and fifty percent of the people aren't going to like it, or or or. or a majority of the people or a certain percentage of the people rather aren't going to like it. I just think that the fans should have been the ones to the people who support the team should have been the ones that named the team. So they should have done something, allowed the fan have a fan vote, allow the fans to pick the name and then gone from there. But if I were, if, you know, if it, was, if it was up to me, I would have chosen the red tails. JB. Red tails all the way. I think that was the best name. If you get, if you didn't want to use that, I think, Rick, uh, Rich had the second best thing with the hog. I, I would have spelled it H-O-G-S, though, but it, it's all good. Either way, anything was better than the Commanders. Could have kept the Redskins the two years with the football team. You know, could have kept the football team. That would have been better than the Commanders. So, either way, a kerfuckle, all Daniel Snyder. What a mess. All right, and I'll say anything with the name Red, but you know what? Since we have a baseball show, I'm going back to my original answer to begin with. It should have brought back the Washington Senators. I don't <laughs> care. Um, so there you go. I'm the only one that believes in Washington Senators. We have the Ottawa Senators. I still don't know what an Ottawa Senator is in Canada. But no, I'm not turning this into a debate over that because I don't want to get crushed by the parliamentary people north of the border. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going there. But I'm going to say the Washington Senators. With that said, folks, this is Inside the Piskin. My name is Scott Morgan with Motor City Madmouth. Please be joined by Rick Curdy, Mr. Opinion, Steve Ballesteri, Mel Farr Jr., and J.B. Ellis. This is, get used to these guys. You're going to see them around a lot. And as if you don't already, with that said, Rick Curdy, lead off and let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Uh, you can find me on my website at www.charlottebats.com. I'm also on Facebook at uh, Charlotte MLB, Charlotte Bats Baseball on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram at Charlotte Bats. I'm on Twitter at Charlotte Bats Baseball. And I'm also on the LinkedIn under Rick Curdy, and our email address is cltbatsbaseball at gmail.com. Steve? On Twitter, SteveB7SFG, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn under Steve Balistrieri. I write for patsfans.com as well as uh, suffix.com and 1945.com. Melfar Jr.? Uh, all the social media at Melfar Jr. Uh, you can find out what we have going on for the kids down here in Atlanta, also up there in Detroit at Melfar.org. And second, but last but not least, JB Ellis. JB underscore the program on Twitter, Sideline Sports, show seven nights a week, the main show Tuesday night, 830, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, also on DBA television every 4, uh, 4 a.m., seven nights a week. And for those of you watching us YouTube, we have our ticker going, so there's a lot of our contact information. For those of you that are not are listening to us, I'll go over this one more time. You want to hear Inside the Pigskin as well as our other shows. Uh, you can find us on Spreaker, Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts, a YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe at no charge. You'll get all the updates there. www.southfloridatribune.com gets it done on the website. Southfloridatribune at gmail.com gets it done uh, email and of course feel free to follow us at Tribune South on Twitter. I can be located on LinkedIn as well. So guys, what an incredible broadcast we had tonight! No shortage of opinions. We all have. We all know it is a Washington Commanders, but I get to do it one more time. Say the Washington what? 
Okay, well, I'm going to leave us on that note, folks. So once again, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside the Pigskin, and we look forward to seeing you on another episode in the near future. Good night, everybody, and have yourself a wonderful weekend, and thanks to my incredible crew for making this a great night. We enjoyed your company, and I hope a lot of our listeners and uh, watchers enjoyed your information as well. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Go Commies. Ha, ha, ha.